Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be using the TI Inspire to solve an equation and I want to let you know that there are really three ways to solve an equation in a uh, calculator. Now this is for a calculus class, um, you know in calculus we tend to need to solve equations a lot and we often are doing them graph, you know we, we need to look at them graphically too but whenever we're solving an equation we're either going to, without a calculator, we're going to be doing uh, you know, probably factoring something like that or solving in some other way that we can do without a calculator. But with a calculator, there are really only three ways to do this. The first way is to find the x-intercepts, which is what I'm going to cover in this video. The second way is to find the intersections, which I will cover in another video. And the third way, which is actually the only way you can do it, the only way you can do it with a cast, like if you have a cast version, you can do the third way. If you don't have a cast version of the T inspire, then you cannot do it the third way. And that's actually basically to put it in the calculator and say solve, because the cast version actually can solve the equation for you. And I'll show you that at the end of this um, video. Now, how do you know which type of uh, method to use? Well, it really depends on the problem that you're doing. So if you have an X on both sides of the equation, you're going to use the intersection method. Uh, although you can use either method, to be honest. If you have a, just a number on one side, or it's set equal to zero, then you're going to want to use the zero method. So in this problem here, I have ln of x plus 2 minus 3x squared equals 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first subtract 4 over. So I'm going to set everything equal to zero. Then the stuff that I have equal to zero, I'm going to go and put it in my graph uh, and graph it as a function in my graphing calculator part. So I've gone ahead and I have uh, plugged this into function one, ln x plus two minus three x squared plus four. And I've got my function here. This is what it looks like. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find these x intercepts because this is where this function is equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, I want to find the x values where the y is equal to zero, which is going to solve the equation for me, right? So I don't think I did that right. That's a plus four. This is okay. So we're going to go and change this to negative because, um, yeah, because, well, this needs to be a plus. Otherwise, oh, well, let's see what happens if I change this to minus. Yeah, see, it has no zeros. So it, there's no, there would be no answer. So let's go and change this to plus. So we can find the answer to this, okay? So over here, we had a minus four, or a negative, not minus, but a negative. And that adds over to a positive four. Okay, let's make sure everything's the right thing here. Yes, it is. So I'm gonna find these x-intercepts, which we're gonna go to menu, and we're gonna go to analyze graph, and we want the zero. The zero is the x-intercept. So I'm gonna go ahead and click zero, and the nice thing about this little finger will pop up with a dotted line. And it says lower bound. Tell me the lower bound. Basically, it's saying give me a value that's just on the left of whatever zero that I'm trying to find. So all I'm going to do is you've got two options here. You can either pick a number like negative two and actually plug in negative two. Or you could just draw the finger just right on you know this side and click it. Okay, and I, when I click it, You'll see a shaded area once I start to draw. A shaded area will come up, and wow, look at that. Oh, as soon as I go over it, the zero comes up. Okay, so all I have to do is go over a little bit, and the zero comes up, and that's my answer right there negative 1.13. Now, in calculus, we want everything to three decimal places, so or three decimal places after the decimal. So I'm going to want to change my, um, my settings here so that I float a little bit more. Okay, let's float four. Okay, so now there we go, we float four, so now we got negative 1.134, which is exactly what we want to put on our answer. So we're gonna do it one more time for this one. Menu, analyze graph, zero. Again, I'm just gonna go right over to the left, and then I'm gonna click it. Now it's asking me for the upper bound, so I'm gonna drag it over. And I get my other one, which is positive 1.316. And so my answer to this equation is x equals negative 1.134 or x equals 1.316. And those that would be how I find the uh, solve this equation using the zero method. Now, 
I did mention that at the end of this video, I would show you how to do this in the cast. So just real quickly, if you are using a cast version, it's really kind of neat. Um, in a calculator, we simply say solve and we type in and we, we just basically put in our function or, or our equation, I'm sorry, x plus one, I believe it was, minus three x squared. And I think it was equal to negative four, if I'm correct. Let's go back here and make sure I'm right. Oh, it's x plus two. Okay, x plus two. So we'll change that to x plus two. And then I need to tell, tell it what variable to solve for. So I'm gonna hit say comma x. And I'm gonna say, hey, inspire, cast, solve this for x and hit enter. Boom, solved it for x. So that's pretty cool that the cast can do it. Now, a non-cast version, which is what most of you guys have, is not going to be able to do that. But if you have a cast version, it's kind of nice, simple, quick, easy to do to use the solve function in the, in the calculator, okay? So there you go. Those are two ways to solve a, an equation, um, really using the zero method, but there's a way to use the cast version to solve the equation. Okay, guys, we'll see you soon. Bye.